Hey folks, this is a video, the first video in section 8.7, where we are going to be learning how to graph in polars. We already know how to graph with x's and y's, um, so this is going to be um, a, a whole section of graphing r's and thetas. And the first statement kind of introduces um, a few different terminologies, but honestly, you're really not going to see um, this particular statement again. I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into rectangular and polar coordinates. Um, rectangular coordinates, we are well familiar with our x's and y's. Polar coordinates is going to be r's and thetas, but notice how it's written. It's actually written in coordinate form. Uh, notice I've also given you another copy of this that I gave you back in section 8.4 where you're splitting your brain into the rectangular side and the polar side. Um, the equations that you see here, um, all of these equations are split into two sides with one side being polar, one side being rectangular. So you've got here the rectangular side versus the polar side, rectangular versus polar. Um, here's polar versus rectangular. Here is polar versus rectangular. All of these you're familiar with already. This is the Pythagorean theorem. This is Sokotoa, the Toa part of Sokotoa. So you're, you're familiar with all of these equations already. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into example number one where we learn how to plot a polar coordinate. So notice our instructions here. The first thing that we're supposed to do is to plot a point in the polar coordinate system. And then after that, we're going to determine um, the rectangular coordinate. Okay, so what we see here is that in this example, we've been given r's and thetas. Ultimately, in the second half of the um, instructions, we want legs. So, um, but first of all, let's learn how to plot in the coordinate system in the polar coordinate system, excuse me. So the first thing that you want to do is you always want to deal with the angle first. And I'm going to call um, these spokes, um, kind of like the spokes on a bicycle. Okay, so um, go to the 135 degree spoke. Now, that was kind of a poor choice of words in this particular case because 135 degrees is smack dab in the middle of the second quadrant and I don't have a spoke for that. But you understand what I'm saying here. So 135 degrees, the location is gonna be smack dab through the second quadrant. All of these are at 135 degrees. But I wanna go, now let's deal with the R part of this. I wanna go to ring four. So here's ring four. We're going to follow it all the way around to where 135 degrees is, and this is where my coordinate is going to lie. So right there. So that's how you draw a polar coordinate. Now, the next thing is, is that I'm supposed to give the rectangular coordinate. Well, we understand that if I have r's and thetas, all I have to use is this handy dandy little formula to be able to get um, my uh, legs to get my A's and B's or my X's and my Y's. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do using X equals R cosine theta, we'll plug that in. We know, we already see where 135 degrees is. If you were looking um, at your actual unit circle here, um, we would have the cosine value being negative root two over two. Multiply and you have a negative two root two. Finding the Y value, r equals uh, or y equals r sine theta so it's going to be four times the sine of 135 and then when we reduce that that's going to be two root two now that's your x and your y value but you have not given a rectangular coordinate so the last thing that you have to do here is to go ahead and write it properly as a coordinate all right for part b very similar here so once again, let's go ahead and draw it first. So we want to find the pi over 6 spoke, which is going to be right here. Now here's something that we've never run into before. We've never had a negative radius. So what does a negative radius tell us to do? If this is the spoke I'm supposed to be using, 
A negative radius says, no, don't use this spoke. Go out the back door and use the exact opposite spoke. So when I normally would have used my pi over six spoke, that negative radius says, no, don't use your actual spoke. Use the back door spoke. Use the exact opposite spoke. So what I'm going to do then, I'm still going to go to ring three. Here's my ring three. Whoops, I didn't mean to color on that. Um, here's my ring three, but now instead of going to ring three on this spoke, I'm gonna go to ring three on the exact opposite spoke. So this is where I'm gonna draw my coordinate right here. So that's what it looks like. And now let's go ahead and get ourselves um, that rectangular coordinate. So using x equals r cosine theta, which is gonna be negative three times the cosine of pi over six. Cosine of pi over six is still in this location. Um, so cosine pi over six is gonna be root three over two. Multiply, you get negative three root three over two. That's my x value. Finding my y value, same concept. We've got negative three times the sine of pi over six. Sine of pi over six is a half. And so when we multiply, this is gonna be negative three halves. But again, this is not a sufficient answer. We need to make sure that we write it or type it in that actual coordinate format. Um, for uh, part C, this one's actually pretty easy. So the first thing is, is let's go find our spoke. Well, where is negative pi over two? Well, pi over two is just gonna be down here because um, we're going in a negative direction. So here's the pi over two spoke, I'm sorry, negative pi over two spoke. And we're gonna go to ring two on that spoke. So here's ring two, and I'm gonna go to the negative pi over two spoke. Now, as soon as I write this down, I don't even need little formulas of x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta because um, I know what this coordinate is. Um, this coordinate is on the negative y-axis, so my x value is zero and my y value is two. So zero, negative two. Um, while a given point in the plane can have only one pair of rectangular coordinates, um, that same point can have an infinite number of pairs of polar coordinates. So um, what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you, I'm actually the reflection question is going to give me some examples um, of, of why I can have multiple and even an infinite number of polar coordinates. So for example number two, I'm supposed to find three other pairs of polar coordinates for the point five, negative 110. All right, so what I've done here is I've drawn um, my spoke of 110, which is right here. I'm sorry, negative 110. So we're going in a negative direction, 110 degrees. This would have been a negative 90. So we're going past negative 90 to negative 110, and then we're gonna go to ring five. Now I know I don't have rings marked on this, but let's just pretend that the point that I have marked there is um, on ring five. All right, so that is definitely, um, that is, is this coordinate right here, but this is asking me for three more possibilities. So what we wanna understand is not only can I get to this point by using a negative angle, I can also get to this point by using a positive angle. And so you might ask yourself, well, what is the positive angle that is coterminal um, to negative 110 degrees? And um, that's gonna be 250 degrees. All I would have to do is take negative 110 and add a whole circle to it to get to that coterminal angle. So um, my, I'm still going out to ring five. Um, I'm just going in a different direction to get there. All right, so that's definitely an option. Well, what if, what if, <coughs> I'm sorry, what if instead of using the <coughs> the, the uh, spoke that I drew, that negative 110 degree spoke that I drew, what if I drew the back door spoke? So what is the spoke that's the exact opposite <coughs> of, um, of that negative 110 degree spoke? And um, what we find is that all I have to do is take negative 110 and add 180 to it because that's exactly halfway across the circle. But 
what you got to remember, and let me draw that here. So what you have to remember is that um, <clears throat> this is not using the normal radius of five. Since I'm using the backdoor spoke, I need to be using the radius of negative five because remember a negative radius tells me to use that backdoor spoke. So um, negative five, 70 degrees, again, that's negative 110 plus 180 um, is going to give me another coordinate that's exactly the same as where I was right here. But that's not the only um, one that I can use for my backdoor coordinate. My backdoor coordinate, I could also use this one right here so I can get to it um, in the negative way as well. And so what I would do in that case is I would just simply take my 70 and I would subtract 360 from that. So um, when I get to that, then that'll be negative 5, negative 290. Now, to answer that reflection question about giving an example of why there could be an infinite number of... Um, polar coordinates. The reason for that is because of the fact that I could keep on going around the circle over and over and over again. All right, um, one more example here, and um, then I will stop this particular video. And this one is asking me um, for to find two pairs of polar coordinates um, for the point with rectangular coordinate 6 negative six root three. So what I have here is I've been given legs and I'm asked for polar. And you say, well, why didn't you ask that question on the last one? Well, because I was given polar and I was still asked for polar. So I wasn't actually switching the sides of my brain on that one. So again, anytime you have legs and you want to find polar, draw your picture. So the first thing I did here is, as you can see, I drew my picture. I did the Pythagorean theorem to be able to get my radius which is 12, and then my theta um, is going to be at 5 pi over 3 or 300 or negative pi over 3 or negative 60. Um, real quick, how did I get that? Um, let me just kind of walk you through how my brain got that. And my, my brain says, hey, um, using Sokotoa, what are the two prettiest numbers on, on this picture? Well, 6 and 12. If this is my theta, and it is, um, this is my adjacent and my hypotenuse. And so my brain says, well, where um, adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine. So cosine um, of what angle is going to equal a half and so, um, and it has to be in the fourth quadrant. And so that's going to occur at 5 pi over 3 or 300 or negative pi over 3 or negative 60. We're not told whether to work in radians or degrees. So we can work in anything we want to. We don't have any restrictions. It doesn't say from 0 to 2 pi or from 0 to 360 or anything like that. So we can work any way we want to. So this gives me my r and my theta. By the way, that automatically hands me a polar coordinate. Um, so I could use 12, 300. I could use 12, pi, 5, pi over 3. I could use 12, negative pi over 3. I've got plenty of options here that I can use. Um, another option that I could use is 12, negative 60 because of the fact that on my unit circle, 300 is coterminal to negative 60 degrees. Um, I could also use um, 12, 5, pi over 3. Now, these are all three of these um, examples here um, are, whoops, I didn't mean to erase there. All three of these examples have a positive radius. Um, I could have even done more examples using the backdoor spoke, which is going to be at 2 pi over 3 or 120 degrees, um, and a negative radius. So just understand the possibilities here are endless. Now, sometimes you're going to be given restrictions. And so I just wanted to show you what kind of restrictions you might be given on your assignments. So here we it just said give any old two pairs of polar coordinates. But sometimes you might be told um, give two pairs of polar coordinates where one has an r less than zero, aka negative, and one has an r greater than zero, aka positive. Or maybe it'll say where your theta lands between zero and two pi. Well, now you know you are restricted to radians and they have to be positive radians. Or maybe it says um, that your um, point should land in, uh, between negative 360 to zero. Now you know you have to be working in degrees 
and it has to be negative. So there's all kinds of different restrictions that could be placed on you. So just be sure that you read the directions carefully. All right, here's where this one's going to stop. We'll come back um, to do a little bit more graphing.